Aloha everyone and welcome back to the Kaimana Conservation Channel. As you guys may have noticed, I am not filming outside. Yay! Um, as fun as it is to film on the beach, and I've heard a lot of really positive feedback about filming on the beach in the past, um, there were some other things to think about such as uh, sunrise and the sun coming through the trees creating all kinds of patterns on my face, uh, as well as the sound of traffic. Most beaches around here are within earshot of a highway, as well as a lot of curious onlookers. Uh, all of the beaches are public here in Maui, which means no matter where I tried to go, there were always people in the background going, what you doing? What you doing? Um, so it kind of was out of necessity. The lights, my studio lights, just came in yesterday, and we are giving them a first try today. Um, obviously it might change as I kind of figure things out, uh, but we're going to go ahead and try and use the new inside studio today to answer some questions. So I'm really hoping that this studio will be really beneficial for multiple ways. One for me, so I have a nice quiet place to talk to you guys, but two, because I can't answer questions when I am underwater, which has been a majority of my videos so far. However, I have gotten just absolutely amazing questions uh, over the past couple of months. Uh, from you guys on the channel. Some people have messaged me privately. I've gotten questions on the Kaimana Conservation Facebook and Instagram as well. Um, and I'm hoping that this little studio area will provide me a nice place to kind of sit down with you guys and go into some of those question and answer sessions a little bit more thoroughly. Speaking of questions, I got a really great question from one of my subscribers, Dana. Thank you, Dana. Um, she was actually asking about coral and coral bleaching, um, and that could not have come at a better time because I just discovered this absolutely awesome animation on Shutterstock and uh, I snagged it and I'm like, oh, I'm so gonna use this uh, for a feature video. And then that question came in. So we are going to be going over what is coral and coral bleaching today. It is a bit of a lengthy topic. Uh, I'm not quite sure yet, but we may end up breaking it in half. And this video is gonna be all about coral or a coral 101. And then the next video will be about what is coral bleaching and why that is a problem. Not sure yet, we'll see how long it takes to do. Um, and I may cut it into uh, two parts. That being said, we're gonna go ahead and get going. Let's dive in. So today we're going to be talking about the number one most important animal that is found in the tropical coral reef ecosystem. Um, however, it is also the most underappreciated or unrecognized animals in that ecosystem as well. If you have clicked the link, then you already know that this is a video about corals. Um, so we're going to be diving into that today because corals don't get nearly enough credit. However, as their name suggests, tropical coral reef ecosystems 100% depend on the corals being there and for them to be healthy in order to have a thriving ecosystem. Okay, so first things first, what is a coral? I get this question, it's probably my number one question regarding corals while I'm at work, is what is a coral? There's some confusion. Is it a plant? Is it an animal? Is it a rock? Is it a mineral? We don't know. What is a coral? So there is some confusion about corals and what they are, and that's because some of you guys may have heard different things as you've encountered uh, writings or heard things about corals or seen them on documentaries. You may hear that they uh, photosynthesize and they require light, and you're like, okay, well, that's a characteristic of a plant, so it's a plant. But then you also may have heard that they have tentacles and they can eat things from the water column. Okay, that doesn't sound like a plant. That sounds a little bit more like an animal. But then you also have seen maybe little fragments of coral, uh, either at stores or um, on the beach, or obviously when you're out snorkeling, you see all these amazing rock looking structures and you're like, okay, maybe it's a rock. I'm not sure. So let's clear it up for the record. Corals are officially animals. Corals are actually in the phylum called Cnidaria, which uh, means that they are close relatives to sea jellies and sea anemones. Um, and this is extremely apparent once you get a coral underneath of the microscope. And that is because the individual coral animals, which are very tiny, they're called polyps. Um, when you look closely at that polyp, this relationship becomes obvious because um, underneath that microscope, you can see there's a ring of tentacles 
around a central mouth and that goes down into the stomach just like a jellyfish or an anemone. So picture a jellyfish in your mind. Most of us know what a jellyfish looks like. You've got the bell and then you've got the tentacles. Essentially all a coral is is an upside down jellyfish that's attached to the bottom. So picture an upside down jellyfish uh, when I explain the rest of this to you. So corals have stinging cells on their tentacles just like jellyfish do. Those stinging tentacles are called pneumatocysts and those pneumatocysts are able to sting um, and collect any yummy food that is floating through the water column. So tiny zooplankton or tiny animals floating around in the water column can get zapped by the uh, pneumatocysts and then it'll use those tentacles to basically grab that food and then bring it back and then it'll use the tentacle to put it down into its stomach where it will digest it. So that's the really cool like animal part of a coral polyp. So I know imagining a coral using its tentacles to rip things out of the water and eat it may be a little bit difficult to imagine, but the good thing is, is you guys don't have to imagine it because there is actually some really, really cool footage over on the Maui Ocean Center's YouTube channel. Um, it is called the Coral Feeding Video, um, and I'll link it down in the description below, um, but it is so cool. They actually videoed these corals underneath of a microscope so you have this like close-up view so you can see it and they've time-lapsed it because corals are a little bit slower than we are um, but what they do is they feed the corals brine shrimp which you guys may know as sea monkeys uh, if you guys have ever heard of sea monkeys you kind of have an idea but uh, if you've never heard of sea monkeys or brine shrimp they're itty bitty little crustaceans that uh, swim around in the open ocean column in the water column and they're very small and they are a prime food source of coral. So they'll take the brine shrimp and they'll feed the coral. They put it in the water with the coral. And then once it touches the coral's uh, stinging cells, those pneumatocysts, it'll, um, it'll shock and then it the coral can then eat it and it is so fascinating to watch um, I would definitely recommend that you guys go over to that channel and watch that it will completely change the way that you look at corals the tiny polyps that you see under the microscope however are only a part of the animal uh, there are some exceptions, but most corals are what are called colonial species, which means that there are hundreds, if not thousands, if not millions of coral polyps, all these tiny little coral polyps that are built structurally together to make up one giant coral head, which is what we see when we go out into the ocean. So as the coral grows, it actually deposits a mineral called calcium carbonate. Uh, so that's where the rock concept comes from. That calcium carbonate, which is also known as limestone, uh, gets deposited by the coral polyp um, and it goes underneath of it. This calcium carbonate is a bright white, much like the calcium in our bones. You guys may know that, you know, it's a very bright, clean white, and it's the exact same color uh, for this coral skeleton. The coral animal is actually the thin living tissue that spread across the non-living calcium carbonate structure underneath. And then as the coral continues to grow and deposit more and more uh, calcium carbonate, that structure begins to grow and that creates the forms and shapes and sizes that we normally see on the reef. Corals create incredible underwater structures and they come in all different shapes and sizes. There are some corals that look like an underwater rock. They're rounded, which is probably why they get mistaken for a rock so often. Um, there are other corals that look like they're almost branching towards the surface. They've got like fingers, like digitate fingers that look like they're reaching up and out of the coral. Uh, there are other corals that look like they're growing plates um, and, and they're more horizontal. So they look almost like an underwater table. Um, and then there are also corals corals that look like almost like blankets like they've just been dropped over whatever um, and they're encrusting on whatever surface they're growing on. Corals grow extremely slowly. There are some corals in the world that are over a thousand years old and they only grow about a centimeter or so a year. There are other corals that grow a bit faster and they can reach great heights in under a century. I know that still sounds like a long time but in the life of a coral that's pretty darn fast. Together, corals can grow into these absolutely massive structures. There are some of these reef systems that are actually visible from space, like the Great Barrier Reef. The Great Barrier Reef is actually considered to be the largest living organisms um, because they are one of the only animals that you can see from space. 
Most coral reefs have amazing biodiversity when it comes to coral, which means there's a lot of different species in that environment or in that ecosystem. And this not only provides biodiversity for the corals, but also for the animals that live inside of that reef ecosystem. Although corals do have tentacles and they are able to gather food using those tentacles from the water column, corals do have a symbiotic relationship or a mutually beneficial relationship with another organism that helps to keep that coral fed. And that's where the plants come in. Inside the tissues of the coral is a single-celled algae called zooanthellae, and the zooanthellae provides the coral with food because it is performing photosynthesis and creating sugars. So it's essentially like the corals have this live-in greenhouse inside of its tissues that's providing it with up to 80% of its food. It's a really good trade-off for the algae because the algae gets protection from the coral, and it's a really good trade-off for the coral because in exchange for that, it it is getting food from an interior source. Not only does the zooanthellae provide the coral with food, it also provides something else that it's lesser known. The algae actually provides the coral with its color. The coral tissue is inherently clear, it's completely transparent, um, and then the algae that lives inside of the tissues um, is what gives it its color. So each coral species has a different symbiotic relationship with different types of zooanthellae, and each zooanthellae is a different color, so, which is why you get all those fun colors on the reef because the zooanthellae can provide a certain coral yellow, orange, blue, green, purple, red. There's so many different cool colors that you can see on the reef, and that is all due to the algae that lives inside of the coral's tissues. Hopefully that has cleared up some of the confusion about what a coral is. It is an animal, but it also creates a mineral or a rock underneath of itself, which is its calcium carbonate skeleton structure, and it houses a plant inside of its tissues, which provide it with most of its food. All right, guys, well, that about wraps it up for this week. Uh, that way I don't make the video too long. We are going to stop it here. We're going to leave you guys with what is a coral and Coral 101. Um, and next week we're going to be going into uh, corals and coral bleaching and how that affects the reef. Make sure you guys come back next week and finish it up. And I will see you guys next time.